if this is your first time on my channel, you are most definitely welcome. If you are not subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button, then hit the notification bell so that way you know the next time that I post a video regarding the medical school application process. And my guess is if you're watching this video, you're either one, interested in my personal journey, or two, trying to get yourself into medical school. So go ahead and hit the notification button so that way you stay up to date and you get more advice every single week. If you're a returning watcher, thank you so much for sticking with your girl through thick and thin. For those who were there back when I just had 100 subscribers, I'm with y'all. So today, I am gonna be talking about the medical school interview process. So I think I'm pretty successful when I'm in a position where I can give advice about the interview process and also talk about things to think about and ways to make sure that you excel during your interviews. So let's get into the video. The less having an interview is a great opportunity for them to get to know you, see you as a human being, and it really allows them to see if what's on paper matches what's in person, which is really, really important. You can look really, really good on paper and then just not have communication skills or that likability to yourself. Or, you know, maybe you could have been very iffy on paper and they see you in person and they're just like, you know what? It's a wrap, we need to accept this person. I'm gonna give you guys some advice to be in that group of acceptances. You wanna make it so hard for them to say no to you that when they meet you, they're like, I want this person to treat my grandma. I want this person to be in my medical school. I want this person to be my classmate. Like that's what you, that is your goal at the interviews. So you definitely wanna prepare, but you don't wanna sound rehearsed. So there are certain questions that of course will probably come up in almost any or most interviews you will have. And those questions are like, why medicine? Even though your personal statement may address why you are pursuing medicine, you may still get asked that question in person, right? They wanna see what, how do you articulate your why medicine in person? How do you verbally communicate that they may ask you why our school of course for every applicant it's like I just want to get into a medical school that's why I'm applying girl but you know every school wants to feel special they want to feel like you know why you're applying to the school and you know why you want to be there so you really want to articulate and figure out why did I apply to the school why am I interviewing here and why do I want to go to this medical school you know so you you will chances are you'll get asked that question I've been asked that question multiple times in different forms right so it's really really important to think about those answers they may ask you my this is the question I hate the most oh, it's not even a question it's a statement tell me about your so. Literally, that prompt is stressing me out so much because it's like, what do you want to know? Do you want to know my childhood? Do you want to know like what school I went to? Like, what about me do you want to know? Because there's so much. But you really want to formulate an answer for that and bullet points. I say like, you know, you could write down what your answer would be, but don't memorize it and then regurgitate it if someone were to ask you that. You definitely want to have bullet points of like, okay, these are the kind of things I want to touch upon. So for example, when I was rehearsing and prepping for my Tell Me About Yourself, I knew that there were certain things or certain anecdotes I always wanted to bring up in every single interview I went to where they asked me I knew I wanted to talk about my childhood right I wanted to kind of talk about my resilience and kind of what led me to where I am today right I wanted to talk a bit about my family I wanted to talk about my academic struggles I wanted to also talk about my love for mentoring like there were certain things that I knew that are so integral to me that I had to talk about so even though I didn't memorize like word for word what I had once upon a time you know written down I made sure I had those bullet points so I knew the things I wanted to cover it's really really important to practice practice speak out loud see how you will sound but they hate it when you sound rehearsed and they can tell when you were like literally reading from a teleprompt in your brain bullet points be conversational but still get your point across they may also ask you some strengths and weaknesses there were some schools that asked what is one thing that you know my sister or my friend would say about me you may want to come up with a answer to the most current issue in healthcare or the most pressing issue in healthcare, you will definitely want to be knowledgeable about the different kind of health insurances, the state of our health system in the US. Those are definitely things you want to be well informed about just because you never know what you're gonna what they're gonna ask you and you want to make sure that if you say you are pursuing medicine, you are up to date on what's happening. What are the socioeconomic barriers to health? What are what does health disparity mean? What does health equity mean? You definitely want to know those kind of key terms. So there's a book called the pre playbook interview something I'm gonna link it below in the description box check it out because it has literally a bunch of questions that you may get asked at interviews even even if you don't buy the book if you just Google medical school interview questions you will get like lists and tons of questions that they may ask you another thing that I used is student doctor network we love and hate the website but it was really really helpful for my interviews because when I knew I got an interview for a certain school I would go look up the interview feedback for that school where people who have interviewed in the past have written like what kind of questions they got asked at the school how they rated the stress 
stress level of the interview, how they felt about the interview. And that kind of made me feel a bit more prepared in terms of like, okay, these are the kind of questions that this school likes to ask students. It was really, really insightful and that kind of what helped me specify my preparation for each school. I had a general interview preparation, but I also wanted to make sure I prepared for each individual school because no school is like the other. It's really, really important to also have specialized, specified prep for each school that you get invited to as well. And you really can't do that until you get invited to the school because you don't know who's gonna invite you to the interview until you get invited. Don't wait until the night before to be prepping or rehearsing because you need sleep the night before. You want to be energized, rested up for your interview, which brings me to my next point. Don't schedule interviews too close together because you don't want to. Like every time I would get an interview invite, I got so excited that I just like, for the most part, I picked a date. And I would pick a date before asking my boss for time off at work, which I definitely had times where my boss did not approve my time off and I actually had to call the school and ask to reschedule. And if you can avoid rescheduling an interview, you really want to because not every school will give you that grace to reschedule. You use it or lose it, you know, if that's the kind of thing it is. If you don't take that spot, they may just give it to someone else and they may not reschedule you. I was blessed, I had to reschedule two interviews. The first interview I had to reschedule because I didn't realize that I had scheduled interviews back to back but they were across like different spectrums of the US. I had an interview in LA and then an interview in Connecticut and I realized in that one day break I had between the interviews there was no way I could get from LA to Connecticut in time for the interview. So I literally was so embarrassed I had to call school and be like hey so I actually just did all the math and I realized I wouldn't be able to make it can I reschedule? And by the time I rescheduled there was no dates until the next month. So my interview date ended up being a month later than what I had initially scheduled and I was lucky that they even rescheduled me but you don't want to do that and make sure to check the locations of the schools before you schedule yourself because I just was so excited about getting the interview that I didn't realize that they were across like they were like six hours away from each other and like you know with flights and stuff you can never really find a convenient flight that will get you to and fro if you're going to schedule interviews back to back to back make sure they are in close proximity to each other so there was this one week in September where I literally had an interview every other day I kid you guys not every other day and I was like by the end of it I was super super stressed and I didn't realize how much traveling and just being on the move could really take a toll on my body so if you if you have to do it you know do like rough it out but if you can do space out your interviews because you want time to give yourself to prep for the next one you don't want to kind of be on the go like it was like one day I was in LA the next day I was in Massachusetts the next day I was in Connecticut the next day I was in DC like literally I was like back to back to back I was stressed y'all I was so so stressed but at the same time it felt good because I knew okay I've like just knocked out like most of my interviews right and I knew that like I don't have to like travel for another like two or three weeks or anything like that so make sure you're being strategic when scheduling those dates the next thing I would say is check the weather before you go I remember my last interview was in Chicago and my sister lives in Chicago and she had told me she was like hey make sure you bring a coat and in my head I'm thinking it's October like how bad could it be I didn't check the weather I didn't listen to my sister's advice y'all when I got to Chicago my toes fell off from how frozen they were. It started snowing, y'all. I didn't even have any attire prepared for the weather. And I was just so cold, I was so freezing, and like I was just so uncomfortable. And I was like, I cannot wait to get back to California because I am cold and I don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. Plan accordingly and pack accordingly because you don't wanna put yourself in a situation where you were not prepared for the weather at the school or you were not prepared for anything that may come up. The next thing I would say, and this is more in terms of saving money, if you can, reach out to current students at the school see if anyone's willing to host you I know when I was in DC I really honestly I was just really really lucky that the places I traveled to I either had a friend that lived there or you know I could easily drive from like home or like something like that there was this one particular school I went to in DC where I, literally I stayed at a friend of a friend like literally I did not know the person from Adam but like because you know that trust I had in the other friend I stayed there and I stayed there for free it really helps cut costs so if you can DM students like Ooh, child Applying is expensive and you want to save the coin where you can. You can also ask schools if they'd be willing to fund you. Like not all schools would do this and I did not do this, but I do have a friend who like was an international student and was traveling. He reached out to school and said, hey, you know, times are tough. Is there any way you can fund either my flight or hotel or whatever? And this school did reimburse him for travel costs, but they reimbursed him after he had already interviewed. The next thing I would say is, of course, dress professionally. Like, I am definitely someone that, like, I prefer to err on the side of, like, being more modest in certain cases because you just don't want to risk it, right? You don't want the color you're wearing or, like, 
your ostentatious like shoes or something to stand out as opposed to you and you want to call attention to the right thing so you definitely want to dress professionally if you guys want to see a video of kind of how I shop for my interview clothes because y'all know I am shown the scammer and I try to cut costs where possible and for me I could not spend hundreds of dollars on like a whole like tailored type of suit I just did not have that money so I you know hustled and I was able to find some really decent interview clothes from some very affordable places um, in terms of individuality, I know one thing that my parents were concerned about was my piercings. For those who don't know, I have three piercings on both ears. And I remember when I was going for one interview, my mom was like, oh, do you want to take out like two of the earrings and maybe your nose ring, you know, because, you know, you definitely don't want like that to be the reason you don't get into the school or whatever. And in my head, I was kind of like, if a school is going to reject me because I have a nose piercing or because I have multiple piercings in my ear, I don't know if I want to go to that school, right? But I also understood what she was saying too, right? She was coming from a place of concern. And I definitely think as long as whatever you're wearing is modest, it's okay, you know? And for me, I was like, I could take out my nose piercing, I could take out the earrings, but they're still going to see the hole, you know? Like, I can't hide the hole that's there. So for me, it was like, I'll put in small studs and then, you know, just kind of keep it modest. My nose ring, I wear a pretty small nose ring in the first place and it's barely noticeable anyways and like by the time I put foundation sometimes you can't even see my nose ring so for me I definitely still want to keep that sense of individuality I was not willing to to try to be something I'm not right because any time outside that interview I would have had my nose ring in I would have had my earrings in so I would definitely ear shy away from having a nose ring you don't want to have a ring right or like big hoops or anything something very small modest i kept it cute kept it professional but i also kept it me if that makes sense the next thing i would say out is let your story stand out not you lord forgive me for this but like the most annoying people the most annoying candidates were the people who were so like alpha-ish who were like oh because it's a group activity let me like be the leader to show that i'm a leader and like you know that i know how to do teamwork but in all actuality i feel like it just hurt our group and the task and it kind of made them look a bit more like you're not actually helping the situation you don't want to be one of those obnoxious alpha candidates at the interviews be yourself but you don't have to like show out the fact that you're at the interview already means that you're pretty exceptional and phenomenal right don't overdo it that's all i'm gonna say is don't overdo it because trust me you don't want to be that annoying person where everyone's looking at you like you're doing too much you doing more than me is not gonna like make you more likely to get into the school than i am and you know <laughs> You know what, let me keep my petty comments to myself. The next thing I said is you also want to interview the school as well. Yes, you're going there to kind of kind of solidify your case and say this is who I am, but you also want to make sure that as you interview, you are paying close attention to the school because this is a school you may end up at and you want to make sure that you ask all the questions you need to ask and you want to make sure that you can actually see yourself thriving and being happy at that school, right? I'm going to enjoy myself here. I like the people here. I like the atmosphere. I like the faculty. I like what the school stands for. So you want to interview the school as well. And you you can do that through talking with the current students. You will have ample opportunity to talk with current students. Ask them questions. Ask them about their social, um, you know, experience. They ask them about their academic experience. Ask them about how well they feel supported by the school. Ask them about their living expenses. Ask them all these questions. You really want to get a vibe and see what is life like as a medical student here guess what the school didn't pay you to be there you paid to be there so you better be interviewing the school I, every interview i was at i was taking notes i probably like that crackhead you know that was just taking notes even when people were giving presentations but i was taking notes for myself because i knew that i was learning so much about the school that probably in a couple days i may forget so for me it was really helpful to take all the notes about certain programs they offer or certain things that you know i didn't know about the school and it really helped me so as i was building all these notes about the schools i was interviewing at i was able to compare and contrast and also pay attention to the candidates you're interviewing with as I said before getting to the interview means that the school really likes you and it also means that they like the other people that are interviewing with you and if you don't feel like you have a good experience with the other candidates you're interviewing with that kind of gives you a somewhat idea of the kind of people that they that the school likes granted it's a very small sample size because at most you'll ever have maybe like 10 to 15 maybe 20 people at your interview day but still I think it's still important to pay attention to those personalities don't let it be your deciding factor but it's important Point. There were certain schools where I was like, wow, some of these candidates feel very like cutthroat type of personality trying to say like, see who's better than who or who's this and this and like, I don't know if I want that kind of
a vibe because I want to go to medical school where I don't feel like I'm still competing with you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the pre-med process is already cutthroat, you know, like swim, sink or swim type of thing. Like I don't want to go into medical school and have classmates who still have that same mentality, right? So for me, I paid a very close attention to the way other candidates behaved around me, spoke to me, spoke to other people. I paid attention to that because I want to make sure that the school I pick, I am going to school with people that I can see myself being friends with. I can see myself, we're working in a team together to accomplish some like group project or something. So it's really important to pay attention to the candidates there as well. The last thing I would say is just be yourself. For me, I wanted to be myself and I knew that whatever school accept me, I knew and I would feel confident that they accepted me because this is me, take me as I am. If you don't want me, cool. If you do, then I'm happy you accept me as who I am. If you guys want more information about interviews, definitely look up some books. I can definitely recommend some books and I'll put them in the description box below that helped me when I was prepping. I do think there are ways to prep for free. Talk to current medical students. Talk to people who have been successful at interviews, i.e. <laughs> me dm me let me know if you have any questions or need help prepping for your interviews need help walking th through stuff i'd be more than happy to help you with that you guys know i love to help others get ahead too right what's the point of being at the top if you can't bring others with you so if you guys have any questions let me know oh and before i forget after your interview send a thank you note you want to be sure to thank your interviewer for the time that they spent to interview you because it is so important i think nowadays in the world of technology emails will suffice that is all i have for today i know this was a pretty lengthy video so i apologize but there's just so much about the interview process that i wanted to get out and have you guys thinking about if you guys want to see videos of like kind of how i shot for my interview clothes while saving money also give the video a thumbs up let me know in the comment section if you finished watching this video and you are still not subscribed i am judging you go ahead and subscribe and i will see you my new subscriber in the next video